thanks for watching Four Color Commentary. I'm Mark Allen, and it's been a while, but uh, I just wanted to uh, make one of these videos again. And, um, you know, now that we're a little more settled, I think, I think this is going to be a little more regular now. But uh, today has been an interesting day anyway, because uh, we, the family and I went out this morning and learned a new, a new sport, learned pickleball. I'd never played pickleball before. It's kind of a combination of tennis, ping pong, and racquetball. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. We think we found a new family hobby, something we're gonna we're gonna do uh, a little more. In fact, um, right after going to uh, to play pickleball, we came back and ate lunch. And uh, uh, Tabitha, my wife, and I went out and we found some uh, pickleball equipment on sale. So we've got some paddles and balls and everything for the family. And so anyway, it was a lot of fun. But anyway, I just I just wanted to uh, do one of these uh, do a four color commentary video. Uh, just to talk about a few things uh, that have been on my radar lately and that I've gotten in the mail. The first one, of course, is this one. Very excited to get this again. Chamber of Darkness number four. Now, what this is, is this, this contains a story called Star the Slayer uh, by Barry Windsor Smith. And the, the, my understanding of this, some call it a prototype, some call it a tryout. But uh, this was just, this came out this book came out just a few minutes or a few minutes a few months before Conan number one was published. Actually, somebody the the seller called this very good to fine. I think it's really kind of falls into fine plus to very fine minus uh, condition. But I like that. I like when uh, and I do that myself when I sell stuff. I usually kind of undershoot uh, the um, the condition because you got so many people out there that will claim oh, this isn't what you if you say exactly what it is and you're right. There's always going to be someone who'll disagree. It's hard to disagree, though, I think, that this is at least a fine plus, especially if you look at the gloss. Pages are nice in it. But anyway, this, um, this story called Star the Slayer was drawn by Barry Windsor Smith and, was, and is considered by some to be a prototype of Conan the Barbarian. And so, you know, the, the, of course, the, the, the history goes that, that Marvel wanted John Buscema, who, of course, uh, ended up taking over Conan that they wanted him on on it uh, to begin with, but they but uh, Marvel didn't want to pay that much. They wanted an, a more a lesser known artist, a newer artist. But um, there, of course, is the opening page. It's not hard to see uh, the the, uh, on the on right there on that side. It's not hard to see the similarities between Star and Conan there. Um, but just just uh, re reacquired this recently. This was of course written by uh, Roy Thomas. And um, with Stan Lee still editing there, and but uh, and Barry Smith doing the art, but not hard to uh, to see the appeal of it from a historical standpoint. But this is one of those books that I've had in my collection a time or two before, and uh, just uh, glommed onto again because it was for a great price. And it's one that that I've wanted to um, hold on to in this case. Now, I told my son, my oldest son, recently that I feel like. Uh, I'm a, I'm a collector, obviously, but I also feel like, in a sense, a curator. Unless we got into some kind of financial difficulty, medical difficulty. I keep watching my feet because we have a, we have a cat now. And um, a kitten and trying to, trying to watch out for it. It's underfoot a lot. Uh, anyway, um, uh, I feel like I am a collector, but I feel like a curator. Because unless we had some kind of a um, uh, medical emergency or financial emergency, I don't foresee ever selling my collection. Uh, I, I feel like a curator kind of uh, weeding it out and putting, you know, making it full of the best stuff possible for my kids or for my wife one day after I'm gone, if they need to, you know, if they just to enjoy or if they need to, to, to sell and help them out. But uh, anyway, Chamber of Darkness number four, great book to have in your collection. And uh, if it's not on your radar, it probably should be. Now, this next thing I want to show, and this is what the lion's share of this video is going to be about. Um, when you think, when you hear the, the name Basil Wolverton, and uh, a lot of you older comics collectors know who that is, but there's lots of things you may think about. You might think about Powerhouse Pepper. You might think about Space Hawks. You might think about uh, DC's Plop, uh, his covers for DC's Plop. You might think about, uh, what was it, Henrietta the Hyena? Uh, who uh, that won that won won him a contest, uh, you know, for to get his first art job or something like that. This the ugly ugly girl that he drew, Henrietta the Hyena, I believe. Someone correct me on that. You might think about um, Life magazine. He did some illustrations for them. You might think about the stickers and the cards and the pinback 
uh, pens and stuff like that that he, he did various creatures for. But uh, you might think about Mad Magazine. I don't think I mentioned that. But anyway, what I think about, what the first thing that comes to mind when I think about Basil Wolverton is this right here, the Wolverton Bible. Or um, the, actually, this is the hardback collection come out a few years ago of really the Bible, the Bible story. The Bible story book or the Bible story, I think is what it was called, Basil Wolverton's uh, Bible story. This is what this is. Now, this has got a, a wonderful um, introduction by his his son, Monty, and um, kind of a rundown of uh, the history of his work and such, such as that. It's a great book, got some great photos in there of uh, Wolverton, and then the one below that is Herbert Armstrong, okay, founder of, uh, of Radio, Radio Church, now I just forgot what it was called, uh, Radio Church of God, and then it became Worldwide Church of God, it's something else now, but I didn't, I didn't make this video to talk theology or talk about the church, but about Wolverton's work for that church. And this, what, what he did is he, he compiled a, a, you know, did a, a Bible storybook series of the entire Old Testament and Revelation. Now, this is his comic book work, his magazine work, notwithstanding, this is some of the best Basil Wolverton work you will ever find, you will ever see. If you are a Basil Wolverton fan, I don't care what favorite genre or what favorite character he has done or work he's done, uh, of yours, you you need to take a gander at this stuff if you never have. Uh, he did some amazing work uh, throughout this series, and um, I had thought about doing this as a as a um, uh, ref, rousing reference materials, but you know I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to I wanted to show a lot more than I could have in just a, a couple of minutes, you know, two or three minutes. But just amazing his his cross hatching and his line work and the detail. And he didn't, you'll notice on this also, he didn't get quite as cartoony on uh, this stuff because he was treating the subject matter a little more seriously, which I appreciate. And here's the thing, according to his own son, Monty, of all the things that Wolverton did, this was what he wanted to be most known for was he was a devout, you know, devout Christian. He believed the Bible. He believed, um, you know, he had a faith. Uh, his, some of his outrageous work and ugly work notwithstanding for Mad Magazine he, he had a faith, and he wanted this to be the, the, the work that he was the most known for. Uh, but his, this work, all this work, uh, took place in uh, the, the Bible Storybook uh, series, of course, uh, and, um, and then also a couple of publications that the Worldwide Church of God did. Uh, one was College Press or something like that. But um, he, uh, uh, you know, he did this over a period of 20 years. I want to say 1952 or 1953 to 1973 or four. And so over 20 years, uh, he, uh, he worked on this series. And so just some amazing, like I said, you can flip all through this book. This is talking about, this is not a retelling or reprinting uh, of, of the, the entire series necessarily as much as a highlight for his art and with commentary uh, on his art, I think by his son, Monty. I haven't got to read through this cover to cover yet. But just amazing, some of it's unpublished work that didn't make it in the first series, in the Bible book series. But this is just great, great stuff. Big, thick tome, nicely bound, uh, beautiful cover work. Um, I have a friend that, um, uh, that, does, that lives in Nashville uh, who, who does uh, uh, book jackets, designs book jackets and stuff like that. Looks like something he would have designed. I love the, I just love the book, the, the design of the cover and everything on there. Now... A little bit of history on that. Like I said, I said he, he put that put that work together beginning in the 50s, which is true. Uh, now, in the 80s, they reprinted, and I'm going backwards for a reason. You'll see in a moment. But uh, in the 80s, they reprinted his, um, his work with some beautiful, all, all I have on that is volume two, but with some beautiful color illustrated covers. Look at that. It's a Basil Wolverton cover on that. Some of you may have seen these before in, a, in churches or in church libraries or in book sales or bookstores and not realized that there was Wolverton work throughout this. I mean, because, you know, there's no, you don't really see, it's not, I don't think his, he, his signature is even on that cover piece, but that's Basil Wolverton's work. But of course, within the book, you have this amazing artwork by Basil Wolverton and done, I think, with a lot of passion, more passion than any of his other stuff that, that, that I've ever seen. And um, just, again, just the detail and, and such that he puts into it. But here's what I wanted to do. 
This is another, I mentioned the Chamber of Darkness number four was something I've had in my collection before. And uh, this, it's the same with this. I finally recently was able to acquire the entire run of the original Bible story. These are the ones that were originally published. Um, and it's interesting because they were published for the Bible, the, the people who were part of the Worldwide Church of God and uh, them only. The first one is, I don't know if this will zoom in, but the first one, of course, is, and you can see it there, 1961. Okay, copyright 1961, Radio Church of God. It was called Radio Church of God before it was Worldwide Church of God. And um, and there's also in the in the usually in the front somewhere it'll say not for sale, not for sale. But I can't find that in here. But um, anyway, just again, I was able to uh, get these again. And and if you decide that you want to find, I found all these on eBay. They all all of the covers look the same on all the volumes, uh, just different illustrations inside different stories. If you decide that you want to go ahead and acquire these on eBay, be ready to wait. Be ready to bid, to wait, because here's the thing. I've seen people looking, asking for these. I actually have two copies of volume two. Um, but I've seen people try to sell these uh, for up, up to $200 a pop per volume, not per collection, not for the collection, for per volume. Uh, some people have these and they think they've got something and they are rare and they're not just floating around out there uh, anywhere and they're not easy to find. But I didn't pay over $15, okay, plus shipping uh, for any, any, any one of these copies. And this is old, nice, beginning in 1961, uh, Basil Wolverton artwork in here. Great stuff, a great kind of a unusual collectible for the comics fan, Golden and Silver Age comics fan. So I just wanted to share those with you. The Bible Story uh, by Basil Wolverton. Uh, that's the, that's your long-term search. I, I really want to go and I want to get all of those too. I want to get every volume of the 1980s reprints or reissues uh, just for those cover, those cover pieces, those front cover pieces. Uh, just beautifully done uh, work. And of course, that's your long-term search. Unless you just happen to know where to go get a set of those go get them okay if they're not too much but then uh but then this is your short term you can find this on ebay you can find it on amazon you can maybe find it at a local bookstore you can order it through your comic shop for most likely that's where i got mine so uh and so let me check the copyright on this i don't remember what it's just been the last few years but uh, this is your quick quick your quick grab but if you decide you like it and you like the history of it Go back and you can find those others. This was come, this came out a little further back than I thought, I guess, 2009, the Wolverton Bible. Okay, so anyway, just wanted to share a little Basil Wolverton history with you there that you might not have known. Maybe you did, but uh, some great stuff. I didn't do the history credit, obviously, but I just wanted to let you know kind of where those came from. And hey, uh, it's interesting to find these uh, these these neat pieces that are, are the comic greats did that maybe nobody knows about. In fact, in researching this, I found out that um, Robert Crumb I also did a, a fairly uh, um, reverent and respect, respected um, adaption of Genesis. And it's just, if you just go and, and look for a search on eBay or search on, on, on Google or whatever, uh, Robert Crumb, Genesis, okay, and you'll find information on that. Really want to acquire that one of these days. But anyway, Basil Wolverton, one of my all-time favorites, and uh, just love that stuff, and Hope you enjoyed that. But anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, keep on keep on looking out there. Keep on looking for the deals. Uh, you can find them if you're willing to wait. Thanks for watching Fort Color Commentary.